Ransomware attacks are on the rise about 185% year to date, and also the cost associated with ransomware are surpassing $20 billion as well. I'm Demetrius Malbro, cloud advocate here at Veritas, and I'm here to get into a bite-sized portion of a very super important topic called immutable storage, and some of the reasons why, as you are protecting your workloads, that you do implement something such as immutable storage and making sure that that data and your workloads are super safe and protected after that data has been backed up and copied to a secondary location. And so as you are writing data with your applications, whether it's a, an Oracle database or it may be some type of virtualized environment uh, running VMware, or it can even be a microservices Kubernetes uh, type of environment as well. As you are protecting those workloads and you're backing that data up across the network, you want to be super specific about how you are storing that data. And you want to make sure you're storing that data in a fashion that is in a zero trust fashion. It's protected and it's keeping your data safe against things such as ransomware because ransomware is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when because ransomware attacks are happening very often, uh, every few seconds or so. Let's talk a little bit about three different ways if you are looking for a solution or maybe you have an existing solution and evaluation is up. Consider that your next solution or your existing solution has an independent compliance clock on the storage side. So this will protect you against things like NTP hacks and also OS hacks where bad actors are able to modify the operating system clock and also use NTP to expire the data that was backed up and to zero out that retention and you therefore lose that data. The second thing as well is Having worm storage or write once read mini storage where that data cannot be modified, changed, or deleted as well. So it's in a read only format. And whether it is on an appliance or it is sitting in some type of object storage, worm is the way to go. And my favorite is having an isolated recovery environment where the data is sitting behind the far firewall, so you have to pull, implement a pull to get the data across in an air-gapped fashion, which adds another layer of defense to help you tighten up your security posture. Also, don't forget to implement things such as encryption as your data is traveling across the network in transit or that data is sitting at rest Encryption is also another fantastic way to keep that data and to keep ransomware attackers at bay. And in this isolated recovery environment, once again, you also need something like anomaly detection and malware scanning to continually scan the data on the backup side to make sure that data is pristine and that data has not been modified. And if so, send an alert to notify the administrators to let them know that that data has been modified or changed so you can remediate that and catch that before you start recovering in an actual ransomware fashion. So you wanna rehearse all of your different recovery mechanisms so when ransomware hits, you are ready to go. And also you can do that in an orchestrated fashion so the data in your isolated recovery environment can be also recovered let's say in the cloud or maybe back on-prem into an on-prem data center. So these are just a few key topics to discuss around making sure that backup data is super solid, making sure that it's backed up in a zero trust fashion. It can't be modified, changed or deleted from ransomware. And I really am glad to be here with you today. So hit that like button if this is something that you benefited from, or maybe you have more questions, add a comment down below or even subscribe because we will continue 
rolling out these videos in a frequent fashion on a week by week basis. So thank you again for tuning in and see you next time.